know that it's that it's not very attainable or um, or it's going to be really expensive. And there's no, I mean, that's why we do this as a group. It's why there's multiple criteria, right? It it's intended such that things average out. And I mean, I think when you look at it, it you can kind of get a gut feel knowing that just driving around and looking at properties on which you think would be the most valuable to the town and which wouldn't at a really high level. And then you can dig into the criteria and hopefully, you know, however you put in your categories kind of jives with your gut feel for wh where you think they should be. I know that's pretty vague, but that's a general approach that I use. If there are questions, can't members mm -hmm. send them out to the group and then we can individually respond to that? I think so. I, th I think that's a good approach. I mean, I, I do think it's better to let people ask questions to be able to make a better decision. Now that I think about that, rather than just saying, sorry, you know, you don't understand it. So you just have to go gas, right? That's never a comfortable situation. So I think that's, I think that's reasonable. So does the weighted mean the ranking? What's from one, whatever, the most oh, the yeah. The way it was just that we had seven questions and we had to get to 100%. <laughs> oh, no, I don't mean that way. Oh, I see. Yeah. Under the property, we Oh, say right. So, right, if I enter 10, um, right, it, it'll just start building a score Got it. is yeah, what yeah. it'll do mm, for each, each property, right? So each person will fill this in for each property and then we'll get a summarized list of each people and then we'll concatenate it all together. But, but what does the 10 mean in that example? So 10, see the scale column oh, right here? Scale. Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah. Right. Thank you. Sure. You know, Ryan, I have one question. Oh, go ahead. Ryan, one thing I was thinking about, since we're out of money and are going to be out of money for the next 20 years, do we have a program or can we start a program encouraging residents, especially elderly residents, to donate their properties to the town to be used for open space and wildlife? Do we have such a thing, Sandy? And if well, not, I, we start something? I mean, I think when the, manage, when the town, town staff reaches out to the, each property owner, essentially once a year, that if they were interested in doing that, that that would come up. I mean, I don't know. I've never seen anything personally as a property owner. I, I'm not sure. Well, but hold on though. Like we're not interested in a third of an acre lot in Rock Creek. No, but if, right? it's, a, if it's close to the park, an existing park, then we would be, right? I don't think so because that's not really been our, that's not really how we've gone after open space, right? That wouldn't be a natural open space. I would, to me, that would be a park. Right. I mean, it's a way we could look at it, but there also would be a huge expense in tearing down that home and restoring it to natural land, uh, you know, back to open space. I'm just kind of brainstorming because there's no money and there's going to be no money for a while. So how to get continue to get property if Leave the town money. I mean, if they leave the town property, then I guess it could always be sold and used for open space and parkland. Um, but I, I, I just threw it out as an idea, you know. I like yeah. the brainstorming, Marcy, and I've always wondered about a donation fund of some yeah. way that the town same could thing, do, yeah, where individuals could, you know, crowdsourcing and give whatever money they want in hopes that that will be beneficial for an acquisition at some point in time. But I don't know how we would, who we would ask about that. I guess Sandy is the first person. I think though we need to make that a separate discussion, right? That isn't this topic, right? The yes, topic is the ranking process and how we're gonna go about it. So right, I'm fine right. putting that topic on a future meeting. Okay. Ryan, um, 
it, um, I have a question or two about the the system itself and maybe a comment. Sure. Is now a good time to dive in a little bit? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, dive in. Cool. First of all, I love the system and the weighted approach. I um, think the criteria are really smart. Um, do question criteria five, though, the wildlife being worth less than the others. And going back to Rainier's comment, I'm wondering about management, the land size. Um, wondering why, I'm wondering if that should be a factor at all uh, or why it would be weighted more than something like wildlife for outdoor space. Um, we had a long discussion a year ago on this and I don't remember why. I think it was split pretty evenly down the middle on should each one of these have equal weightings or do we pick one that is lower than the others? Um, and we just, we voted and we said, yeah, we want to keep the weight numbers um, even or, or round numbers rather than even. I don't remember exactly why we went 10% on wildlife and 15% on the others. I just, I, I don't. Yeah. Do you, Tracy, the, do you remember the, that? I don't remember specifically, but I remember something about um, if you if you build it, they will come. And so as everything else gets developed and the open space that's left, it is going to be a natural um, draw for the wildlife that we have left in this town, that they're going to go to the open parcels that are left. I'm not exactly sure why we put it at, at 10. Hmm. I see. That's an interesting point. So in some ways, wildlife was getting counted twice. And so you could put it a little bit lower because... If you buy open space, the wildlife will naturally perhaps use it. Yeah. Anyway, I was just going to perhaps make a motion of thinking about reducing the value of the land size one, given the large purchase that just happened. The rest of the parcels in town are comparable in size. Um, I think we'd be splitting hairs. Well, um, to, so to me, it's, a, it's, it's a bit tax, heavily. It, oh, fair enough. And I'm that fair point. Um, but to me, I I, I think the the size of it is less important than its current status with respect to wildlife. That'd be my own view. But if others disagree or we just want to leave it the way it is, I'm, I'm fine. I think that the overall uh, approach here is, is really smart. I actually agree with him. I think, I don't really remember why we did 10%. On, and Tracy may be right. I, I remember being part of the committee at the time. And I think that was the logic, but I agree the size of the land shouldn't have the same weight as whether, I mean, Zacharias isn't important necessarily for the size, but for the wildlife that's on it. Well, but it's also one of seven criteria, right? It's not, and I think this was a carryover from the original, but that's fine, right? I, I don't know if I care. I mean, the only thing we should consider is that, you know, it is a change in methodology. And we need to make sure that we're comfortable with it because we will have to justify changing a methodology after we purchase the big property, right? The one property that fits into that category is no longer there. And so because of that, we're changing the, the criteria. I don't know if that, I just don't know how that would go over. I, I, I don't have a good feel for that. There's something well, to be said for consistency year over year. I do like the consistency factor. And when I think of the land size in relation to wildlife, I think of bull jack, tons of wildlife. That's our biggest. The next biggest is the hairiest, tons of wildlife. So I, I think it lines up equally. But again, if people want to feel strongly, we, we could definitely consider It's not something I feel really strongly about. It was just an observation. Uh, yeah. No, I, I, and your point about consistency uh, from year to year, I think is a really smart point. I would so agree I can, on I, can track. I would agree on consistency as well. In particular, if we only do a minor change that looks like splitting hairs, if we do a major change to the whole system, this is something we could justify. But just a minor change, I think, will not look properly. In, may will look inconsistent, and, um, and although it doesn't have a big impact on the overall weighting. I mean, I wish I had, if we had more time and we could choose to take more time, but it'd be interesting to go back into last year's ranking and like maybe swap those percentages and see if it changed either of the result. Um, you know, I don't have that file handy, 
Um, so I can't do that tonight. So if we wanted to do that, we would need to wait and then have the discussion again next meeting to kick off the ranking to be done. So I don't know if we yeah, want to let, wait let's that Let's long. not do that, Ryan. No, let's, unless, not, let's not do that. Unless and somebody a, can bring it up, the, and a, the file. A side note, see. though, Ryan, on the rankings and the history. So in 2018, um, CenturyLink was ranked number one based on how we ranked them. And then in 2019, Zaharias was ranked number one because we yep. added in the wildlife, water, all of that stuff. So it, it did change things, I think, more appropriately and consistent with our, our values and mission. Yeah, I agree. Well, and I think we did realize that the water, like the water was sort of buried in another category. And we realized that, the, you know, it's a pretty scarce resource and that it was pretty important to have it be a separate, uh, separate piece of criteria for us to rank. I can, if you want, I can, I can try to go bring up the file. No, uh, Ryan, I put it out there for thought, but I'm, I'm good. I think um, Tracy's points and others about wildlife sort of co-varying with size is good enough for me. So uh, okay. I, I'm, I'm good here. Yeah, I think we can move on. Unless others have, have feedback on it, of course. I kind of disagree because in looking at this, it looks like we're not giving wildlife the same weight we're giving the other things. Um, I mean, I, I understand that they will follow and it is inherent in some of the other categories, but I don't think Joe, Joe Public will get it. I think looking at the chart, they will think that OSAC does not value wildlife because it's only 10%. I mean, that's my view. Does this ranking ever go, I guess it is public uh, because this is a public meeting, so the public would have access. Have they offered any feedback in the past about the relative I've percentages never, and that kind of detail? I've no? never heard any feedback on that. Not percentages, but we did not have Town 15 on our list. Um, as far as attain, we didn't have the attainability thing. And so when the whole thing came up about someone yeah. wanting to buy town 15, you know, that, that was what inspired changing the weighting and the criteria and making it more accurate to reflect what we can easily get and, and what our values really are. So I, my personal opinion is I feel like this has been a well oiled machine and that we finally have it to a good spot um, where it is right now. Yeah, I appreciate that too, Tracy. I think just new, newbies like me just have to catch up to everyone else's thinking. Uh, your, your thinking on it is just more, more mature than, than mine. Um, but, I, uh, but, but, yeah. I, but anyway, I appreciate that. Uh, go, go ahead, go ahead uh, Ryan. Yeah. Well, I was just thinking, you know, the mistake we, didn't make, we made last time was not putting an asterisk on this and down below putting a note why we decided, you know, to keep it at 10% because it, it is a big glaring mm -hmm. issue. Um, Okay, well, let me let me just just another hi history quick. quick history question while you're doing something right. How how long has this the new approach here been used with this particular breakdown? Is this the second year or more than that? I think this. I mean, in some variation of it, this will be the third year. I think 2018 was that the first time we updated the summary report. I think it might have been. Yes, but then this version we only use. I. I'm pretty sure you're right on 2018, but this version we only used last year. But the 2018 one was a slight change to this. It wasn't, mm -hmm. right. it wasn't major. Right. Understood. And then, and then is another committee like ProStack also doing this exercise or is this one we do only ourselves? This is one we do only ourselves. Okay. And then this is also the last question on this is, this is an ask I assume of the board and we provide this as a deliverable to them every year? Well, we put it on our work plan every year, okay. and that's what Which dictates that we need to do it. Yeah, I mean, the interesting thing was, was when we did it in 2018, it hadn't been updated since 2005. Mm. And we, what, the, what the group came around to was, you know, this is the most important thing we do. We should be looking mm -hmm. at this every year. And especially now, and you know, starting in 2018, 
so many changes were happening so fast, right? So many properties mm -hmm. were getting purchased and developed or, or um, saved for open space that we said, there's a few that's changing fast. You know, we need to go look at this um, often. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, I do have the property. And if I can add on that, I do think it's valuable for the board, but also town staff to have this information because they've referenced it a million times. And when they hear about something being developed, they can always refer to it and understand better what open space thinks about that parcel. Um, so say tract 919, I feel like that, sh that parcel is changing all the time and I can never keep up with it, but town staff is much more knowledgeable about it than us. And so they have all of our thoughts and all of our views all in one document if it ever comes across their plate. So I remember this from last year. We did go and play around with these numbers of making them even versus having the 15 and 10%, and it didn't change the result. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I'm really torn. I, I see both sides of it. So, but we do need to make a decision and, and figure out what we want to do here. Do we want to vote or do we, I mean, I guess the two options are we make these even, right? That becomes like 14, well, it becomes. Well, actually, maybe I wasn't clear in my initial suggestion. It was actually to kind of kill the land size criteria. In other words, I'm not sure that that matters, but, but, but the argument that was pushed back from the group, what I heard there was, no, it does matter. Uh, and here's why. And there were several reasons that were given that all sounded reasonable to me. Um, I wasn't advocating making them all 12 point whatever percent. Uh, <laughs> I was, I no, was actually I, thinking of, of killing the land use one entirely. I mean, not the land size one entirely. But I think it's an interesting, I mean, I, we don't have the summary of the acreage in front of yeah. us, right? Hold on. Just, just, could... what, just one more little sentence on that and then, I'll, and then I'll let it go. For example, right now, the way it's written, it would suggest that a land size that's bigger is one we would favor for purchase. And I don't know that that's necessarily true. All things being equal, maybe we want a smaller one or a bigger one, depending on some of the other factors. I just wasn't sure if, if the way it's scaled is actually reflective of what would ultimately be the deciding factor. Is large mean good? Well, the, I mean, if you assume that the amount of work per property is about the same, if you can get 100 acres versus one acre, you would take 100 acres. And think uh, of the that, impact on citizens. So uh, a one-acre yeah, parcel the other, yeah. impacts far less citizens than a 100-acre parcel. Yeah, that's where I started thinking about the Zaharias. I think I'm finally saying it right. Did I say it right? Yep. <laughs> uh, that's where Zaharias comes in, right? Because its value per unit space is going to be higher, I think, than other places, given the wildlife and given the water. But then you have factors, as, as Tracy pointed out when I pushed back earlier. And so it would co-vary. So in the end, I don't think it really matters if you remove the land size that much. It just isn't going to matter that much. Well, but what, what's interesting, what I'm looking at right now is what, what are the sizes that we have left, right? And yeah. it it's varies from 30 to 15. Yeah. Right? So there is going to be zero in the bottom category. Um, actually, I take that back. There should be one in there, the track 919, which I don't even know if that's available. I don't know if they've started building on that or not. Um, so there would be one in the bottom. There would be two in the middle, and there would be four in the top. But they're all so close that I, I somewhat, I see what you're saying here. Yeah. The other thing on that too is it's not really a, a factor. It's it's predetermined. I, I don't need to go and write that in. You can fill it in for everybody. It's already done. Right? Yes. Agreed. So then it's not really a, a criteria in that in that way. Although I guess it is when you take everyone's input. Because then then it then it would then it would have value. But well, but you're right, it doesn't change it doesn't change person to person, right? We all should have the yeah. same settings <laughs> if we read the document correctly. Yeah, it's 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 objective. It's not subjective, which I think the other criteria are generally 
definitely sub, have some some subjective quality about them. I think but if, I haven't if read them all have, carefully enough to know that. If you don't have it in the spreadsheet, then it gets no weight whatsoever, and everything is subjective that we put in the spreadsheet. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, and there's a risk to having me on committees this. like this. <laughs> no, no, I. The, we should ask the question, right? That's the whole point of this: is to ask the question and understand it. So, yeah. it's a worthwhile discussion. I. I just go back to if I looked at every, something and everything was equal, but one was 30 acres and one was four, I know which one I would rather see the town acquire. Right, but everything wouldn't be equal because of factor six. There would be a difference between those two just based on factor six as well. On attainability? Yeah. Yeah, but other thing, what I mean though, in aggregate, they could all add up to, like the total score could be equal. Right, one could be higher in six and lower in three. Exactly. But it, you know, just saying that, assuming that everything else was the same, that and that was the tiebreaker, I know what I would, which one I would prefer to have. I can understand what you're saying. So you won't, I, yep. I do think it matters, but that's, but that's my opinion. But none of this addresses my point. Are we gonna put an asterisk there? explaining why wildlife is only 10 percent we should yes I mean, we need to i mean the two options we have are to put an asterisk on this and explain it or change the weights to 14.3 we looked but at again, the 14.3 last year ryan you remember and the consensus was that we didn't want to have to deal with all of those fractions and decimals and blah 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 of explaining yeah i think it was more of trying to explain that i i mean you can explain it that each category is getting an equal weighting um uh, i mean i i'm just torn on this i i could go either way but i do remember the analysis that when we changed it it didn't change the rankings so last time when we did it and quite frankly and, and maybe this is too much but what we find, what we found the last two years in this analysis is they really get grouped. There's a top three and then there's everything else. And it really comes out in the scores. And we're very clear to say that in the, in the document that, you know, these top three are very close. And so, you know, if anything were to become available, we should immediately consider a purchase where the other ones are all kind of grouped together in the bottom of the list. So I just, I don't know. I, I don't feel like it's gonna change the answer. And I therefore think that consistency is somewhat important. And so I, you know, my vote is to leave it, but um, well, other with, people can, can disagree. Without confusing too much, maybe adding another thought. Um, many of the details in there are very objective. For example, land size. I mean, it's a given. None of, no matter what each of us thinks about a certain parcel, it's an objective number and this won't change. And so there are many of those in there, which means committee's member in thinking doesn't play a big role in this analysis. Maybe just as a thought experiment, each committee member has the um, right to set a weight for each part between, let's say, 10 and 20%. And therefore, you know, this would address Marcy's concern. She could put wildlife higher, someone else put another um, parameter higher. You no, know? I mean, not using 17.78, you know, maybe using 10, 15, 20 or something easy. But this way, we could put our personal opinion a little bit into what do we individually consider more important. Yeah. My silence is just thinking about that. Um, I think it's a good idea, but then it's even less consistent and science based. I don't want to, you know, imply that this is a study or anything, but then it's really just a bunch of opinions thrown together. Well, I see your point, but it's more than just opinions because no, we don't give, we don't, I don't have a chance to give 100% to something and ignore all the others. 
So by giving a small bandwidth, and I just picked the numbers 10, 15, 20, each of the committee members acknowledges automatically that all of the seven um, aspects are important, but maybe at a little bit different priority. I mean, I don't want to have a huge variety in there, but you now having a small variety, I still think it's fairly scientific, uh, but it puts a little bit personal perspective into account. You know, the other thing on the water, either it has water or not. I mean, what are we judging? Are we judging the amount of water? The value of it, like track 919 has water. Um, and if I recall right, CenturyLink has water, a tiny little pool on it, I believe, but that's not anything compared to obviously Zaharias. Right. Right, like Rogers Farm has a little rain detention pond, right? There's no water in or out and there's no, it's, it's not, it's a low quality surface water, mm. right? It, right, there's, it, it'll dry up in the, in the summer, that kind of thing. That's what we were trying to differentiate, right? Not just binary water, it gets 10, no water, it gets zero. Yeah. I remember a lot of fives. Um, okay. I mean, I, I, my concern, I think my initial reaction to the weight is I like it because each person has their own, you know, can have their own bias, but I agree that then it's not as scientific, right? It's not a set of criteria. It, it almost, and I don't think anyone would do this, but it almost seems like you could use the weightings to back into a ranking that you had preconceived. And I don't know if that, I mean, I guess you could do that anyway. So I don't know. I wouldn't say it's not scientific because uh, it's, it has the same level of science in it than the current is because we're weighting six uh, parameters at 15 and one at 10. I mean, we could probably have endless discussions about this weighting. So you know, should one be 25 because it's the most important? Should one be five because it's less important? And, um, and these discussions will all be based on opinions. And at the end, the group will agree on something, on a consensus, whether it's the right one or not. But giving a little freedom, um, that would eliminate the issue that certain members think that something like wildlife or water is most important and more important than others. Um, so I, I'm personally not concerned about whether it's more or less scientific. I think I'm more concerned about that um, we all may have little bit different opinions about what's what of the parameters are more important than others and setting them all equally probably is less scientific because it would be pure coincidence that seven parameters have the same priority yeah i i mean i agree i mean we are trying to rank what seven things so i don't know i mean i just wonder if we're over overthinking this for seven things, right? I can look at the list and without this list, I kind of know the priority and I bet you, you all can too, right? And so it was a way to add a little bit more depth to that. So I don't know. I, I think they should all be equal. If we're gonna have them all equal, there should be no distinction. Or we should be given, you know, as Rainier said, we should be given more latitude. I don't think that it should be preconceived the way it is. And I don't know why I didn't raise that last year. I suspect, Marcy, because we spent hours addressing the weight we and did. the percentages. We, we did. We, we wanted did. to move on. We, we were, I think we were, I remember that. I think we were all beaten down and I think we would have taken anything at that point. Because our meetings went like three, four hours in those days. Um, I mean, one option is to make it 15, to make it even, make it 15 each. And so it adds up to more than 105, right? We don't have to have a percent on here. We could just have a weight, right? A percent. And we, and we addressed that last year and wrote that off. Doesn't mean we need to write it off this year, but I'm not a big fan of making it over 100%. <laughs> um, yeah, I do. The, 
The more I look at it though, the 10% sticks out as odd to me. And yeah, I know I said something different. And so, okay, so I say we vote. I say we vote on, well, I don't know. We've only got, what, five of us? We're missing mm -hmm. two. But we need to get going on this, right? So the, the two missing doesn't matter. So the options are we leave it, we make them even, or we allow you to have some latitude in the, the values. Does that seem fair? Yeah, I guess so. Sure. Or are there I've other never options? Done it before. Well, the, the other option that comes to mind for me is, is everybody just delete the weight column for now and everybody go do their scoring homework? I've never worked with it. I certainly haven't digested all the criteria and the details that would go into them. So I'm just, I don't know, you're asking me to vote on something that I don't know that I fully have an opinion on. Well, that, that's an interesting point is that, I mean, if everything's equal weighted, then the weight doesn't matter. The weight column's irrelevant. Exactly. To and so, get to a ranking. Didn't we add the weight though, because we wanted things like, I, I don't know. I mean, I thought that the reason we added it was because we wanted the, our, our values again to shine through and adding the weight did that. What do you remember from it? I just thought in the first year we had some things at 30% and some things at lower, like I think we had a much bigger variation in yeah. the weights, or actually, I think when we when we looked at the original evaluation done in 2005, there were way more categories and a ton of different weights on things, and it was really complicated. And I think we just carried over the weight. I don't remember honestly. I know it was so long ago. Someone would have to sit and go, you know, go look, go watch that discussion, and it was a long discussion. I mean, I come back to, I mean, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I think, I mean, that out, is a, that sorry, is another option. Taking out the weight is the easiest solution because it's almost equal anyway. I mean, we have six, yeah. at two, one at 10 and yeah. uh, the 10 sticks out. So it's just not worrying about the weight and eliminating those columns is probably the simplest way to deal with it. Yeah. Right, because yeah, you're not scoring, you're scoring things one, zero to 10. And then you don't have we'll to answer the question. Yeah. And I'm, I, I'm fine with that. I mean, I'm fine yeah, with that yeah. option. Yeah. Um, and and then, then, Ryan, you'll end up adding things up and it's going to break down exactly how you said. You're going to get a top group that stand out. And yeah. Um, I, it's, it's, anyway. I actually think that's a good solution to this. It's simple. It, I think it was just carried over for other reasons and we never really thought to just eliminate it when we talked about it last time. And I think it solves the problem. So I'm in favor of it. I have um, um, one other question, but it'll be quick. Well, hold on, hold on. Are, are we all in agreement on the weight, removing it, that column? I agree, I agree, you've got my vote. Sure. Okay, Tracy, do you want to add anything or? I'm just looking through email to see if I can find any background on why we did that. Well, that I mean, and here's, here's the exercise we can me. do also is that we take the weight out and then we could add it back in and play around with the weights and that's, see. That's where I was going, Ryan, exactly. And right. then we can see if it actually has any impact. And I think we'll find it'll be very little. But you we know, could in, do in, that in exercise my... afterwards. In my day job, I run science panels where people do rankings like this all the time. And I give them criteria and they use the criteria. Um, I do all kinds of normalization exercises with the data afterwards to see if how I weight things would have impacted the outcome. Uh, okay. I think that'd be a useful thing to play with here in this kind of scenario as well. Um, I just hate to see this on our website because for the reason I said before, it looks like Superior OSAC is not giving wildlife the same weight. And that's what Frank said originally when he looked at the chart. He said, why, you know, which. No, I, th um, I think we're all agreeing. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to talk, you know, beat a dead horse, but yeah. Tracy, do you 
before we finalize that or do you do you want to add anything else? Oh, you were going through an email. Yeah, yeah, I'm just hunting through the email. So it looks like it was early, early spring of 2019 that we, I see that we added a new weighting system because I'm commenting that I really like the new weighting system for parcel rankings for several reasons, but primarily for ease of use should the board ask us for further info on it. But um, I'm still hunting for more okay. information. Frank, so you had another question. Why don't you go ahead? Uh, the scale. Um, in the scale, you've defined a 0, a 5, and a 10 in each of the boxes. Um, are we to use a number between 0 and 10, or are we only to use 0, 5, and 10? No, you use any number, 0 to 10. And it's right. relative it, it, to our own yeah, guess subjectively yeah, exactly. somewhere. Okay, thank you. Yep, that was really meant to be a gauge, right, yeah. of, of here's, exactly. here's some hints of what we think can help guide you on how to enter the numbers. Yeah. And then the, so I'm, that, that helps me think through removing the weights. I think all we're doing by removing the weight column is making them all ostensibly even. Yes. Uh, unless when we come back together and we look at the data collectively, we think there's some reason to uh, reweight stuff. Um, so, so Tracy, it's not, it's, it's, all it's doing really is making everything worth 14.3. Yeah. <laughs> and so I have more comments on that in sure. notes and whatnot. Um, some things about the point of the weighting system is to put more emphasis on the realistic aspect of parcel acquisition, which again takes us back to the Town 15 conversation in 2018, I think, which was despite that other parcels are better, the Town 15 is already owned and thus a more realistic open space um, parcel. So if everything is ranked the same, there's really no point in doing the weighted system so it sounds like we had controversy back then even on it and we wanted to use it really to put more emphasis on what was attainable and somehow that attainable only got 50 15 percent like the other things does that all make sense to everyone that makes great sense to me um for one um, an argument i offered at a previous meeting when we were talking about trails was we should think strategically about how to make them all trails not just in the next year, but over the next 20, and one at a time. And it doesn't, you know, eventually we're going to get to all of them, right? Um, rather than trying to rank them each year. And eventually what we're saying is the ones in the ranking list are low priority. We don't want to say that. That's not the message we ever want to share. They're all high priority. And we want to work through them. I would apply the same logic here. You've got a town with a limited amount of available space, a town that's eager to purchase, perhaps if finances arrive, that open space. Our goal should be to acquire all of them. And so strategically, you acquire the ones that are available when they're available. But your goal is not one or versus two. It's one and two. It's just a matter of when. So anyway, that strategy yeah, resonates no, with strongly with me. Strongly yeah. with me, Tracy. Okay. And then one more thing in communication. It looks like we talked about doing, and I know you'll remember this, Ryan, we talked about doing two separate spreadsheets one that was consistent with all of our views and then another one that was just really what's attainable and what's not attainable and then we decided we didn't want to deal with two different ones and so we made it all one again i don't know why attainability was not higher than 15 percent though that's not clear to me well i think part of it was well yeah i don't know i i'm it's so long ago right we need to we need to write down the minutes from these conversations better so that we ha can, well, I don't know, maybe it's, maybe it's valuable to have the conversation every year. I just, the, the thing I go back to is if we're going to get into actually changing these weights, it's going to be a long discussion and I don't know how we're ever going to agree upon what should have what weights. That's my concern. It's fair. Um, especially since we've seen in the past, right, those two groupings and regardless of how we change things, they kind of group the same. So I guess I would propose, let's remove the weight, let's rank them the way we want, and then we can do some analysis afterwards on going back and, and let, you know, people can have the spreadsheet and play around with the weights and see what it does to rankings and see if they you know, if people really feel that, you know, after doing the analysis that weights matter, then we could come back and have that discussion. Does that seem like a reasonable approach? 
So if you take out the weight and then something comes available, let's use track 919 again. And we wanted that weight because, hey, it's low on our list, but it's attainable right now. Then we don't have that option of throwing in making attainability 50% and everything else lower. Is that something that any of us care about? But here's the thing right now at 15%, it's not weighting it any differently really than anything else, right? So I totally agree. I think it should be higher if we're concerned about that. The problem is the attainability could change month to month and we rank every 14, 15 months. So we do, but the spreadsheet can be used by town staff or the board. Would they use it? I don't know. I don't, I mean, stuff comes available. I mean, let's face it, there's no money for 20 years and stuff comes available. I don't think we've ever had an opportunity where more than one thing has come available and we've had to choose between one or the other when there's funds. So I I think we're splitting hairs. But even though there's no money for 20 years doesn't mean that we need to write off our work because money can come from unexpected places. I know, uh, but I just don't feel like we should drastically change the process this time because of the money issue. That's my only view. I'm not proposing drastically changing the process. Well, it's setting attainability to 30% and everything else much lower to me is drastically changing the process. I'm proposing leaving it as it is with the weight as an option to be tweaked by whomever at any point in time. I think it would be useful if I could propose here, Ryan, just a a path ahead. Um, I think we should kind of do what you said and and go and do our rankings. And then we should do an analysis of how the rankings might change as a function of the weight distributions. Okay. And then we have that discussion and then we decide whether and how our process should change based on the learning that we have this year. I feel like we're, we're in the abstract until we have numbers in front of us. Um, Would that, would that work? Tracy, would that work for you? I know you've helped. We've kind of gone around the circle here a little bit. On this sure, one. sounds good, Frank. And I know, and I, know we... I kind of sparked it, so I, my, I'm sorry <laughs> about that. <laughs> no, but I, Frank, I think that's good. I think, I think we'll leave it in the spreadsheet, but we'll know yeah. that this is a, an issue to be resolved after we get the results back and, and look at the data. Cool. So is everybody comfortable with that? Yes. That's okay. Fine. Any other questions? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I will get this circulated. Um, the only other thing that we maybe need to think about here, well, obviously CenturyLink comes off the list. Um, Ridge 2 comes off the list. Um, Rogers, now the Third Avenue property, well, Rogers, Rogers may come off the list because those wee cottages are right in planning commission and and town staff so we'll we'll keep it on the list until we know that that zoning has been changed but just be aware that that's in progress and then the third avenue property i think i'm going to need some help i drove by there the other day and there's a foundation going in kind of in the back of those properties and so i don't know if that tract actually is um being developed or not and i don't know exactly how to go figure that out because i can't really walk back there since it's there's no public access um so actually yeah i'll just ask matt he'll he'll know okay I mean, it is interesting because I, it, on the development map, it shows it in a different color. It shows it like Boulder County open space separate from the other ones. And so, and, and from the continuity document, you can tell that right, there's a lot more issues to build on that lot, but we, we should, we'll, I'll need to get that resolved. Um, well, actually I don't need to get it resolved before I send it out. If If you start your ranking and then we find that it's being developed, then we don't use that ranking. So I I won't hold up the process. I'll get this out pretty quickly. And so the plan will be to uh, rank 
send back in, so we'll probably have a three week deadline that'll give me a week to consolidate the data and get it back and report on it next week or next month. Okay, everyone good? Thank you for the uh, discussion. That was, uh, that was really good, so I appreciate it. Okay, I don't think on this next one we need to share. So, um, or I guess I, the, on the agenda, the next one was circling back around on the OSAC budget, the $5,000 that we have. So the two, and the reason we put this on here and the reason that we didn't vote by email was that two of the items that we had brought up um, after some investigation from the town were significantly more than $5,000, right? The trees on the Ormond Roche were, would, would require irrigation. And the estimate on that was 10 to $20,000 to cut the road, tap into the water line in the middle of McCaslin there to bring irrigation over. So that Actually, one, it, yeah. They, there are sleeves yeah. that are all the way across, but um, you know, just, trenching and getting the irrigation up oh, the okay. hill and all of that. But there are sleeves that are there, so when okay. it exists. Okay. So that would cost how much estimated? It was estimated to be significantly more than $5,000. Okay. I mean, it, we were just, I mean, that was basically the, the threshold that we went at it, right? Is it going to be more than that? And most definitely, yes. So, and that was the same with you know, the other thing we talked about was looking at CenturyLink from an ecological standpoint in terms of the prairie dogs, which is kind of goes to our, our next topic. But, um, and what Allison had brought up is that, you know, if we're going to do any future improvements, you know, trails or anything over on CenturyLink, it would be a good idea to have a good ecological assessment to see if there's any areas over there that have you know, certain species and areas that are, you know, maybe need to be more protected than others, right? If, if we ever were to consider, you know, more mountain bike trails or more trails over there, we should be careful. But again, that, when we went back to Smith, who has done um, these estimates for us, it was going to be like a bare bones, I think the quote was like six or seven, Allison, it was something about that. And that was like one visit to the property. And we just felt that, you know, that wasn't going to be a sufficient ecological study. And so, so that one fell off the list. So, and one of the other things was, if I can interject, sorry, yeah, um, was the easement language, you know, we don't have that yet. And once that's finalized, that'll also give some parameters of different things. So, those two were sort of out. So the two that were remaining were um, money for, a, I mean, a few, like 100 or $200 for a social gathering, you know, like we normally do in December. We usually have dinner as a group, right? We didn't think we wanted to do that, but maybe to meet at Wildflower Park and sit 10 feet apart and have dinner and try to, you know, celebrate the pretty major accomplishments we've had this year. So that, that was a small amount. And then the other amount that we had in there was for Peter and the bird program. Um, he'd already outlined quite a potential ask for some money. So, you know, I think that one will be, that one to me is, you know, we should just decide how much, you know, unless we have a big item that we wanna do, we should just decide how much money we should give to Peter to, or I guess we should tell him and then he would purchase and we would reimburse him. Is that how it would work, Allison? Would he, how, how would we actually have him purchase? Would I need to purchase and then give it to him or something like that for the well, bird think, program? Well, I think he could purchase. Um, you know, we do have a tax exempt certificate. I mean, I guess that's the only thing mm -hmm. that you know we typically are mindful of if um sure i just didn't know if you system. could reimburse joe any joe schmo citizen okay i can cool awesome <laughs> so i mean and the, the only other thing would be to go back to the ormond roche amenity and go further down our our list than the trees to see I mean, if there wasn't something else that we wanted to to fund 
funny you should ask that, Ryan. I was just looking at the list. And the next thing it looks like that would be affordable if we are assuming that the board approves all, everything on our small list, the next affordable thing in the medium list would be bike maintenance, air station, workstation, which certainly looks very affordable. The rest in the medium list is expensive. Preservation of the rail bed, shade trees, bird ID signs. We could probably do that, I suppose. Bathrooms, stairway, um, and then the bike maintenance thing. So I'm for that, but I'd love other people's thoughts. Do we have Peter's list somewhere? I'm looking through all my stuff and I don't. No, it was an email between Frank and Peter. I mean, it. he's talking about binoculars and sighting scopes and some bird identification books and these kind of things. Mm -hmm. Ryan, you had asked a two about hard drives and his answer was he's good with the cloud these days, I think. His okay. thinking has evolved cool. on that. Um, okay. But he, but he and I did have a chance to talk earlier this week and and uh, the scopes I think would really be um, pretty fantastic. It just uh, changes the experience of the observers, you know, when we get close and all that. How much money was his list? Well, he didn't he didn't put it out that way. He he just put a list of the kinds of things they would like uh, and so I think whatever number we, if we give him any whatever number we gave him he can spend two. Yeah, I mean, I was my, thinking my recommended approach. My thought is, you know, five hundred to a thousand dollars is okay. somewhere in that range would really set him up nicely. Like, I think for five hundred, he'd be like, "Oh, this is great," but you know, a little bit more, I could get this scope. But you know, a thousand, I think he'd be like, "Holy cow, this is amazing!" Right? We're set up for a long time. Yeah, a scope system is just just for scaling is somewhere around four hundred bucks for the scope and the tripod. Um, you know, binoculars are going to be less around a hundred bucks or a little less. Could we do all three of these things? Like something from yes. the Orman Roche, money, a bunch of money to Peter and. Well, that was my thought coming into this is I think that we don't necessarily need to vote that if we all agree, I think we could go on those three things, right? We could save 200 bucks to be social. And if that doesn't work out, no big deal. Money goes back to the town. We could give 750 to Peter, and then that would leave 4,000 for a, a bike maintenance repair station or something else at Orman Roche. Does anyone I, know how much a bike maintenance workstation? I assume it could cost upwards of 50,000, but does anyone have an idea on cost? Well, the last one we put in was an Eagle Scout project, so. You know, I think a lot of that was self done, um, but I'm sure there's like whole put together kits out there that we could we could look for. Do you think we could get a nice one for 3,500? 4,000? I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm just looking at some things real quickly that have, you know, a pump and some other tools for $1,500. I mean, that's one I found, but nothing on here looks, I, I actually do think we could. And my guess is we could, uh, give this to our uh, resident bike expert on the committee who's not here and he would absolutely know what to do with this so it just how much, how much seemed... maintenance do those uh, bike stations need I mean do we need to budget money for the future to take care of them I don't think so really it's just a, a metallic stand with tools that are attached by cables and they do have to be fixed periodically, um, but I think it's a relatively low amount. Yeah, yeah. Brian, it, it's looking like a grand. I mean, I've looked at a couple of sites and I'm seeing five to seven or 800 bucks. Yeah, so I think. The one thing I was thinking about just now was, you know, CAPS has been doing art installation ideas. I mean, this group has done all of these different rankings and, you know, how is this stuff going to fit together and, you know, just aesthetically to think about that. Because we I mean, do have a bike station at Colton Trailhead. Yep. And we did talk about that. Um, when we went to the trailhead for the CAP subcommittee on placement and flow. So it's not something that, you know, that subcommittee is um, ignoring. But I agree with you, Allison. 
and we, if I can add one more thing, we felt like um, it would work nicely. One section could be used for things like it already is, the, the trash and the um, animal bags and a bike station, because we talked about that. And the, another area would be where the focus of that art piece would go. And Reiner, feel free to jump in if you want to add anything about that subcommittee. No, I mean, I agree. And as you know, we're currently kind of in the selection process for um, what this should be. But I mean, the thing is, the, the trailhead should be, beside the nice art piece, have some practical amenities. And obviously, a bike station is a good idea. I hike there a lot, so I see many bikers. If it's in the budget, I'm all for it to that we get that going. Okay, so um, I, I like the, the bike idea too, but I will offer that the, there is one at the other trailhead. I think I heard that mentioned. And the trails between those two places are pretty chill. Uh, the likelihood of something happening is low. Um, are there nothing else that we need? Well, there's well, a million things on the amenity list that we could pick from if we choose to. Right, but we have already asked for budget for a good section of the list. Mm -hmm. And CAPS is working on pieces and the Historic Commission is working on pieces. I mean, I think it makes sense to have one. Don't get me wrong. I think it makes sense to have one, but it is somewhat redundant. So that's why I was asking if there's anything that we would want at the one place that we don't have at the other. And by the other, I mean Colby Trail. Well, why don't we, I mean, we could just say we're going to reserve 4K for whatever we could figure out how to get for the Colton Trailhead within or that the money. Ormond Roche Trailhead. I'm sorry. Gosh, the Ormond Roche Trailhead. Thank you. <laughs> I think that's a great idea. So. And Are we allowed to hold over any of our money for next year? For example, uh -huh. could we say we want to take 3500 and add it to 3500 next year and then buy the tree? No, not really. Well, and fr the other thing is, Frank, normally all this money gets spent National Trails Day, gets spent on going to the COSA conference. Oh, right. This is a it's special bonus. year that all that stuff was yeah. canceled. We normally don't have these discussions because it's all, it's yeah. all allocated throughout the year. So this is a one-time special deal that we need to figure out. And I'll, another idea, could we wait for the budget meeting to see if our proposal gets shot down or not and if it does get shot down then we could use it on different things for the trailhead or do we have to know I, don't I know. mean we just have to have it purchased this year right Allison I mean that would be the constraint okay then the issue on the budget meeting was although it hap was supposed to happen in August last year I felt like we were they were still doing it late September I don't remember yeah, but I think it has to happen earlier this year due to the elections is right. what I heard. So I think that's fine. And I think just earmarking that money towards Orman Roche pieces. And if we, you know, if we run into bottlenecks or we can't get it done, then the money goes back to the town. So I think that's a reasonable approach. So are you all good with that? Get, the budget will get approved before the election. So right. I think we... At one point, we were supposed to start, I thought supposed to start having budget stuff coming to us today, but I haven't seen it. So, um, but, it, you know, I, I don't think that's a bad idea to see, you know, because I usually by September, I, I was thinking the middle of September, we have a pretty good idea of kind of where we are. Okay, I think that's a good plan, right? We've got the money allocated. We could, uh, you know, on this here, seven fifty for Peter. I think he's going to be ecstatic, and so we're good. Everyone, anyone have any other thing to discuss on this? But we could also, I mean, we could also ask Joel. I mean, Joel could start looking into. Um, the bike station, well, maybe he shouldn't, maybe, like you said, if it doesn't get approved, we might go back to the items on the first list. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Now we are on to Prairie Dogs. So Marcy, I will let you take it away. Okay. Um, unfortunately, my foster cat Snoopy, who's 
single case has decided to be affectionate at this point. I sent out an update um, earlier today on where I am on, P on prairie dogs. Um, basically what I did is I went back to that background sheet I provided last month and I made a couple changes. One was um, Trustee Hammerly had corrected me on what had happened to the 88th Street um, Prairie Dog, so I revised that. And I also mainly changed the recommendation. Um, my recommendation now is basically at the bottom of the sheet, and it is only that the staff recommends that the Town of Superior conduct a study, and I was actually hoping we could uh, donate some of our money to it, to designate prairie dog relocation areas within and outside of Superior. And the reason I'm recommending this recommendation to the board is because we need to have a plan because what I have seen is if there's no plan available, we're going to default to the um, it's not currently feasible to relocate category, um, which is what's happened in Superior lately. Um, so my hope is that if there's a study uh, with the available options for PDs in Superior, then hopefully fewer PDs will be killed. And of course, our last colony is in on the Zacharias property which is up for sale, even though the development is no longer happening. Um, it's just a matter of time before another proposal comes in and the fate of the last colony will be, um, will have to be dealt with. So I think our recommendation to the board hopefully will be adopted and a study will be done of where we can relocate um, the, the PDs and Zacharias. And I know other people here have said that um, there are other PDs in Superior and there may be in, you know, small families <coughs> there, but it, it, the last colony is on Zacharias. Um, in the past month, what I've done is I have reached out to the Prairie Dog Coalition, which is in Boulder, and um, I'm going to meet with them because they have um, people that, especially the director, Lindsay Sterling Crank, who have, um, are very knowledgeable about prairie dogs, and um, they've actually put a plan together for um, how to relocate prairie dogs through the um, Humane Society of the United States, which is online. I've tried to reach out to Susan Spalding at Boco, um, Parks and Space, but Open Space, but I have not been able to get her, and I may ask Allison to help me. Um, Trustee Hammerly, um, confirmed that my point that Broomfield did condition its um, originally its contribution to the purchase of CenturyLink to um, that it be allowed to use the property as a PD relocation area. But I understand from um, Matt, Matt uh, from Matt's response that they're currently not going to contribute anything because there's no money. So. I don't know what's gonna to happen to that, but I do know that Broomfield did use the Rocky Flats plan to relocate some of its um, prairie dogs to. And I'm trying to figure out to find out if um, Superior is, part, is watching um, and whether we are on the um, relocation notification list because <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Um, because um, they do announce from time to time that there is space available for prairie dogs. Um, Boulder is in the middle of creating a new 
prairie dog management policy and practices. They've had a working group since 2017. Um, there has been especially a concern about the size of the prairie dog colonies in their northern agricultural area. And um, unfortunately, the current plan is for them to um, kill 5,500 PD starting in 2021, trapping them and, and using them as a food source for raptors and other animals. Um, there was a big hearing last night, which unfortunately I couldn't attend, where residents were going to uh, to have the ability to testify. I know that um, the Prairie Dog Coalition did testify. Um, I, I know some of the residents did as well, but I don't think anything has changed on their plan um, regarding the PDs in the uh, Northern Agricultural Area. Um, because I know there's several online uh, petitions trying to um, stop the killing. Um, but I can update the group next time. So what my recommendation to the group is, and I don't know if we have enough people, is that um, our recommendation be, as is listed at the bottom of the background page, that the town conduct a study to designate um, prairie dog relocation areas um, within and outside of Superior um, period. And I've left out the, the name of CenturyLink. Um, it is not CenturyLink specific. And I don't think it should be CenturyLink specific. Um, but that's my recommendation. Any questions? I mean, uh, no, but I do want to clarify. I mean, I think you said just now, Marcy, that you were, that we had confirmed that Broomfield conditioned wanted to condition their support. They did not. Broomfield did, uh, they asked, would it be possible to relocate? Right. But they right. said that but it, it's, it was it's not a condition, they were still interested. So okay. I just want to make sure that you understood there was no such condition. They simply asked. They asked, okay. No, no, there was no condition. Sandy, I, I, saw, I saw that in your email. But the whole issue is moot anyway, because they're not contributing, so, right? Yeah. It, it, it is moot at this time. And so it may, you may be looking at it again. Okay. Can I ask a question on that? Sandy, do you know sure. why it was said that we would not entertain the idea of Broomfield Prairie Dogs? Because that's what Matt said. You know, I, I mean, I think the... The reason he said it was we would not consider it as a condition, didn't want, want it to be a condition of the, of getting money from them. You know, it, it, we weren't going to agree to any sort of condition like that um, from any organization. They either wanted to put their money in or they didn't want to put their money in. Mm, okay. So he wasn't against it. He just didn't think it should be part of the discussion for the issue I, that was on the table. He wasn't making a statement one way or the other. He was simply saying that they that we would not entertain at that point that um, relocating prairie yeah. dogs be a condition. I have a question too. Th oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Somebody else is going to go. No, what I was going to say is very often in a negotiation, we all know we don't like conditions. So we don't like anyone putting conditions on their contribution. So that doesn't mean that that condition was judged. It just means that they didn't want conditions. So right. So um, Marcy, thanks for doing um, this additional work. I think it looks really interesting and good. Um, the and and thank you for sharing the superior code language. Um, sure. I find it interesting. In the middle, it says the applicant shall relocate or otherwise remove. And right. Does otherwise remove the stuff that falls into the gassing and otherwise killing yes. kind of stuff. Is that what that means? Yeah, remove remove the dogs. It also means remove them for uh, being fed to other animals, um, remove them by gassing them. Uh, it means anything but relocate. 
And then, and then the next line that mentions the state division of wildlife. Does the town, excuse me, does that group have to approve the dispensation of prairie dogs on a parcel that's set for development or whatever? I, I, Do you know? I think that they have a role in it. And I think that, I'm not sure if it's this group or another group, but there's a requirement that if you move prairie dogs from one town or one county to another, you have to get a permit. Um, hmm. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, I was trying to understand sort of what that decision process was like for um, somebody looking to develop land where prairie dogs occupy and, and, and sort of thinking through that decision tree. I, I like your recommendation. I think ultimately getting more knowledge is always good. Um, and uh, I think being consistent with that superior code, it would make sense uh, to, to have such a study conducted. There was a study conducted that I think either you or Peter or somebody shared with me right after the last meeting that I looked through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was done in the early to mid 2000s, if I remember right. I should, I should have gone back and looked at it. I just didn't have time today. I read it a month ago, right after our last meeting. Um, and in that report, they found that a lot of the smaller existing prairie dog pockets were likely unsustainable and potentially destructive to things that he, people cared about. And my own view was they overstated the destructive piece of it, but I'm not an expert, so I might just be wrong there. Um, but I wonder if that report, which, um, like I said, I think was done in the earlier 2000s, it's might be the old. basis. Yeah. Is it like 2006? Was it, is it's, that right? It was 2005, six, something like that. Yeah. Very, it's so it's anyway, really outdated, I mean. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think it would be useful to look at that. I think another thing that would be useful to look at is my understanding, I think you mentioned it a few minutes ago, is Broomfield has taken advantage of the Rocky Flats relocation program. Right. We should understand the success of that. We should do a case study or have somebody tell us from, from, from Rocky Flats or from Broomfield about how that's working and, and, and whether it's successful. My understanding too is there's another relocation site in Broomfield that hasn't maybe been as successful, but I'm, I'm not sure. I, I've only gotten little snippets of information on that. So it strikes me that we could learn from our neighbors perhaps a little bit on this. Um, um, Broomfield anyway, those are my general thoughts. Broomfield seems more proactive for their PDs uh, from what I've seen. And, um, I, I certainly can find out more if you're interested in that. And, and Peter is a great source because he cares about this issue also. And yeah. you and well, I, we spent, we, we've we been spent a good amount of time on the phone the other day. <laughs> yes, I was on the yes, phone with yes, Peter the other yes, day for yes. a good bit. And I'm, I'm a skeptic by nature, so he appreciated that. And, uh, but I, I, I think it's worthwhile, like I said, to, to learn more. I, I'm not sure where you go with this. But, but the superior code suggests that relocation is a possibility. Uh, and so in my mind, just sort of being responsible for our own code, we should have an understanding or at least uh, a Absolutely. deeper understanding of relocation potential. I, I just think we should, have, we should have a study to find out what our options are. Because if you don't have options, then we're gonna default to what we've been defaulting to. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why I think we should have yeah. a recommendation I don't know. Um, I mean, I was hoping we could throw some money towards the study, um, which we just spent kind of. So I don't know well, what the study would cost. Well, the, what we looked at was going to be, you know, just on CenturyLink, that one property was going to be more than what we have to spend on this. So if that's something. I mean, we're kind of past the budget request time or mm -hmm. period for our committee to make those recommendations. So we might have missed the window. I don't know. Um, my concern here is I don't know, like Marcy, do you know, is Prairie Dog more a town jurisdiction issue or a county jurisdiction issue? I mean, it seems like Boulder County has a lot of the say in what happens here. And I don't know you know, I, I would just be concerned of asking the board to do something that at that then Boulder County comes and says, well, this all doesn't matter because this is completely our jurisdiction and your study 
you know, isn't relevant because of how this is structured. I just don't know. I just know that Boulder County has people on staff that look at this specific issue. And I, I just, you know, good question. I'm, I, I'm just concerned we're that, asking Ryan. the town to do something that could be not relevant. So, so Ryan, building off of that, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I, I just want to say one quick thing. I'm wondering if we could tap into Boulder County more. They have, let's be honest, more money, more resources, more brains on their staff. Is there something that they could help us out with? Well, and that's where I was going to actually go to, Tracy. I think that um, that's um, what I was trying it, to do. It's likely Boulder has done studies on this since our, the town's most recent study. And so we should tap into those. Anyway, I'm well, sorry. Go ahead, yeah, Marcy. That's what I was trying to do, but Boulder County was not responsive, and I'm wondering if Allison can help me with Susan Spaulding, who I understand from Peter is the right person to contact. But she could have been the, um, involved in that hearing last night, and she, they were all off, of, off the grid trying to um, get ready for it. Um, I don't, I don't, oh, I'm sorry. I don't but, specifically know if it was Susan Spaulding, but it's definitely parks and open space. So, right. you know, you could probably contact anybody in the department and, um, you know, see what their up-to-date information is. Well, I contacted her and I was told she was hard to get a hold of and it was confirmed because she was non-responsive. And I didn't have another name. Um, but what I can do and what we can do is I can, um, I am meeting with um, a member of the Prairie Dog Coalition to, so I can fill in the questions and the blanks you've all raised next month if you guys want to carry it over one more month. Um, but one of the things is that, um, well, we know that the, the, the issue is Zacharias, and Zacharias currently does not have another, um, another proposal on it, as far as I know. So this isn't hot right now, but still, I think that um, it should not be, um, you know, uh, discounted because no, I... it's a matter of time. I appreciate it, Marcy. You're getting ahead of the issue, right? So we have a solid plan in place when there's not a rush at the end, right? I exactly, completely, exactly. completely understand. Right, right. And, and to be honest, this is not an easy issue. Um, I mean, we have a code that mandates something. Um, and I know that when the prairie dogs were trapped in, and I, I believe they were fed to raptors for the 88th Street project. I know that the, there was um, the State Division of Wildlife did um, oversee that. Um, so, because I talked to um, Kathy, who was um, involved in that, and she, she told me that they were involved in, and, and she felt that as long as they were involved, it was done um, correctly. So um, anyway, um, I, I think the bottom line is, do we wanna to continue to this to next month where I can fill in the gaps and the questions you've raised or, or do we wanna vote on the proposal now? I would like to continue it. I'd like more information from BOCO and okay. there's a zillion people that you could communicate with there. I know it's challenging to get in touch with them, but maybe like you said, Allison can help with that. And I think your work is fantastic and I totally support it. Thank you. It's, I, you know, I give a hoot, you know? Um, and That's I, what it takes. And I'd like to see us being a little more proactive in wildlife, which is what my interest is in addition to cat life. <laughs> I would like yeah, I, I'd be supportive too. Oh, too. sorry, Renier, go ahead. Oh, thank you. I would like to throw in another concern. I don't want to go into the details, um, but I simply wouldn't be in favor of making such a recommendation to the board because I don't think it's in the mission and scope of OSEC mm. to worry about private dogs. 
But isn't um, life within our scope? Are you saying because it's- Do you have, our, does somebody have our mission statement at the ready? Well, we have, uh, I don't, but we have it. wildlife preservation in it. So I guess it would determine if you deem prairie dogs wildlife or not. So from the website, uh, the purpose of the Open Space Advisory Committee is to investigate options for preserving land for open space purposes in the town of Superior. The mission to acquire, conserve, and provide stewardship of natural open space lands and associated resources to ensure public enjoyment and appropriate recreation and to conduct relevant education programs. The goal is to advise the town board regarding acquisition and protection of natural lands and buffers using the Open Space Fund. Number two, to advocate for the conservation and restoration of natural resources for the benefit of the environment and education and enjoyment of current and future generations. Number three, to provide public outreach, education, and volunteer opportunities by increasing awareness and appreciation of the town of Superior's open space. Four, to provide quality recreation opportunities, including recommendations regarding trails on open space while minimizing the impact on open space. Five, to collaborate with surrounding open space organizations in order to provide further connectivity to trails within the region. So this fits squarely in number two, in my opinion. Yeah, I tend to agree. Well, and it's also in the work plan, it's, you know, we have wildlife um, encouragement, right? It's why we do the Raptor program and all of those things. So I, I do Rene feel- Rainier, you yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Yeah, go ahead, but, but go ahead, finish your thought. I, I was just going to go back to Rainier and say, Rainier, uh, understood you may have some concern about the scoping. Outside of that, do you have issue with the path forward that was outlined? Um, well, I have, um, I mean, there are many things why I think we shouldn't worry about that, but there are more details. You know, first of all, my overarching, uh, looking at the mission statement and the purpose of OSEC, it's about acquisition of open space and not specifics about wildlife. This may be a goal, this may be in the work plan, but I think this is already stretching the mission quite a bit. So I wouldn't be in favor of that. And I mean, there are other reasons why I wouldn't think um, um, or any kind of study costs a lot of money, who pays for that. Studies are biased. You need three or four studies to have an opinion. And I, I think we are, would be repeating something which Boulder County does since 20 years. And um, I have, I've lived in Boulder so long and um, the issue of prairie dogs has been around all the time. So all the questions the study would answer have been answered already and have been paid for. Yeah, the one, the one shift, the, the, the study that was done that I was referencing earlier generally found that the pockets of prairie dogs in Superior weren't large enough to warrant them being protected and sustained given the larger population, larger connected population and some of the open spaces surrounding Superior. I think that a few things have changed though since that report came out. Uh, one is that prairie dogs get wiped out when they get hit with a couple of diseases. And it's not a little wipeout, it's the whole colonies get destroyed. Uh, and the prairie dogs do play a pretty important role in the habitats and community, the natural communities around here by providing a food resource uh, for higher level, higher organisms such as the, the ferret that I think has been endangered and perhaps being reintroduced here and, 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 and raptors. Uh, and then they also play an important role, I think, with the, with, with turning over vegetation. Um, part of my concern the last time we talked about this was it wasn't clear to me that CenturyLink just ever was a home for the prairie dogs and given habitat limitations right now if 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 CenturyLink was suitable for them the probability is they'd already be there uh, doesn't mean they would be but the probability is high and so in, in my view with marcy having removed the CenturyLink piece and taking much more of a of a hey it's less about the place and it's more about you know conserving wildlife um, it, it makes the question a little more interesting for me anyway, um, given the role that this animal can play in these systems, as I understand them. Again, I'm, I'm sort of learning on this right I'll admit. Uh, but anyway, that was, so I was curious how, how deep the, your, your concern about this approach ran. And I, I gather, yeah. I see your point there. And, um, but having living, been living in Boulder for 20 years and, uh, 
having lots of schools and my kids at schools involved in the issue of prairie dogs and kids got um, uh, hurt by prairie dogs or let's say uh, all, uh, all the holes in the, <laughs> in the earth with school properties. Um, my take from that time is there's a huge oversupply of prairie dogs in, in, uh, in the front range here. So I yeah. think it's not worth spending extra money on that. So if I could convince you that that has changed, would that change your view? Because I think the data now show that with the introduction of some plagues in the last decade and a half, the prairie dog populations are actually pretty low, like really low. Yeah, but I, I mean, I'll counter that though, Frank, with what I yeah. saw at Costa last year, where I saw that the Boulder County was actually not relocating any longer, at least this was a year ago. And they said, you know, they had this whole metric of prairie dog versus grassland quality within those areas. And that mm -hmm. once there's too many prairie dogs, the grassland, you know, the the quality of that and the quality of surrounding farmlands goes down. And once that gets to a point, they just say, look, we can't do any more. So that's another data that's point. That's reasonable. And that, but, that's the sort of homework I was looking for. And if that information already exists, I, I, yeah, I, it's how, how impactful can they be? And what's the trade-off? Well, so maybe there's already was, Well, and I think it was yeah. Susan Spaulding that presented that exact paper at COSA. So I, I would like well, to propose a way- wasn't that agricultural property? Not, not, I mean. I don't, re I don't recall, this was a year ago. I mean, yeah, that's what the Boulder study group was studying was of what to do with the 5,500 prairie dogs on the agricultural property. It um, might've been, right? It, because it was that metric. But I, I'd like to propose that Marcy, that you, you know, looks like you've got a meeting set up with a, an expert in the area. Yeah, the coalition, can, the Prairie Dog Coalition. And then you, there's another avenue to keep reaching out to Boulder and, right. and right. also potentially Broomfield because it sounds like Broomfield may be more active in this. And I, I think that, I personally think it's worthwhile to, to get the, to get more information and with more information and then we could decide if we think we want to ask the town for money to do a study. Yeah. I, I think that's a, a reasonable approach. This is a pretty big issue. So every time I, I jump in, there's there's more, you know. <laughs> yep. Deeper and deeper and deeper. Um, yeah, it started I, with a simple idea that keeps mushrooming. So. Yeah, I would just comment that it, it would probably be worthwhile to spend extensive time out on, you know, I'm looking at Boulder County site right now on on prairie dogs and prairie dog relocation and they have some pretty strict guidelines on what would be considered acceptable um prairie dog relocation areas and you know one of the things that i'm reading is it says the the area has to have minimal human contact and uh to allow them to live with minimal human contact and unfortunately for CenturyLink, that that would be a problem for us right now because we have a lot of people on CenturyLink open space a lot. So it would mean a read, you know, if we were to talk CenturyLink, it's going to mean a redesignation of that open space, which, um, you know, would certainly be a conversation that we would have to have with Boulder County because that was not stipulated when we bought the space. Well, I, but I agree with, with Marcy's approach that she's trying to figure out what are the options. Yeah. And so not necessarily limited to CenturyLink. And, but I just know that there are experts of bodies out there or bodies of <laughs> experts <laughs> out there that, you know, you've got them identified. It seems like, you know, you've got one meeting set up in a couple of weeks already. So it seems like mm -hmm. we're really close to knowing some more. So right. I do think it would be prudent to gather that extra information and come back next and, time. And I've been on the, to be on, I've been on the Boulder County Prairie Dog website of the working group and then um, just the general website. And there's hundreds and hundreds, I mean, there's tons of information there. And they do, as, as Trustee Hammerly said, they, they do um, specify how to relocate and what to look at because there's specific things you have to you have to look at the soil you have to look at the vegetation i mean you just don't move a prairie dog anywhere um so um that was one of the reasons i suggested the study because there's specific factors you do have to look at so 
Okay, I'll come back next time, guys, and continue the conversation. Can I ask one last question of Sandy about it? Sandy, has the board addressed the prairie dog issue uh, in any um, large discussion at any point? Uh, the only thing I can say is in the three and a half years I've been on the board, I don't recall it ever coming up. I, I could not speak prior to my term on the board. And I was going to make one quick um, thing to remember. You know, um, last year I remember one of our committees was concerned about not being able to make a budget recommendation at the right time for something, and that um, that committee was urged, you know, you don't really have to worry about that. You could put forward a recommendation okay. or a request at any time, okay. and um, it'll be considered. Thank you for that. I, I did want to add one thought, though, to, to this conversation. If, if our committee didn't have jurisdiction over the wildlife, there's no other committee in Superior that would have it. We're the only ones that that issue would fit into. So, Right, and if the board hasn't addressed it, and no, then no one else has addressed it if we're not doing it. Exactly. And, so, and sometimes discussions are just discussions and gather information and then it's on record. Um, we don't know what will come of it at this point in time is my thought process. Right. And, you know, our study on Zacharias and recommendations talk about wildlife, as, as, as Ryan has said before. And, and you mentioned it in the Town 15 as well. So I will be back next month with more. Watch, stay tuned to the next part of the movie. All right, thank you, Marcy. Sure. Okay, well, we are almost exactly on schedule, which never happens, so this is good. Thank you all. Um, so we're into updates and look aheads. Uh, I'll give you an update on the CenturyLink naming process. So we, um, we had a little bit of a delay getting, you know, we just wanted to make sure that the board was fine with our approach, which we did. Um, Allison did some great work getting the survey up and getting it out on uh, social media and whatnot. So people have until the end of this month to submit their names. And so at the next meeting, we're going to go have to go back through, discuss that and come up with uh, our top five to submit to the board. So that'll and be a I fun discussion. You, I could show you the dashboard right now if you'd like to see yeah, I'd love to. what's are, going are, on. Are you getting, are you getting takers? Uh, yeah, hold on, let me get up the right page. That's awesome. Here. I shared it, you know, on my social media that it was out there. And of course I got just a bunch of snarky comments from <laughs> my friends. So <laughs> those aren't valid, but you know, and I did see some social media discussion on it that people were saying, you know, that'll always be Coyote Ridge to me. So it was interesting. Well, and as you can see here, let me move my our pictures so I can. This uh, green area to the left oh, wow. is Coyote Ridge. Um, and you can see that we've had 217 responses. Wow. So I that's think impressive. that's impressive. Yeah, I was really excited to see that. Um, of course, there are lots of um, <laughs> suggested names. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the group will be able to go through those, um, uh, you know, as they come in. And then we did request for, um, you know, email addresses for prize drawing. So that's kind of what's going on so far. You could tell that this largest chunk is the coyote ridge option so did, did you guys see rattlesnake ridge because there's a lot of rattlers there did, did i yes there are a lot of um typed in entries uh submitted also so yeah yeah allison did this get shared on the cac it was, uh, I, you know, we as staff don't typically post on the CAC, so. Okay. Um, I never saw it on there it by anyone not. else. Okay. Um, I can, although it I went can across, put it out. Oh, sorry. I mean, I'm, I'm fine putting it out on the CAC. 
and then ignore the snark that comes back. Yeah. <laughs> Those people are just usually very active, so we might yeah. get more responses if you put it there. I'll, I'll just throw it out there. Why not? But this is awesome. 200 and some responses. I'll, I'll say that's a, uh, people are paying attention. So that's really cool. Yeah. I, th I thought it was great. So, um, it's on shapesuperior.com. If, uh, you know, if everybody wants to take a look, it's been sent across the different, uh, platforms. It's been in a newsletter. Um, so it'll continue to go out. Thanks for your efforts on that, Allison. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Looks great. Um, having said that, the next one for me was that that Shape Superior website was new to me. So if you haven't, if you all haven't seen that, please go take a look. It's really, I uh, really like the look and feel of it, right? The town website's pretty, you know, there's a lot there, but Shape Superior, I like, just really like the design and shows you the big things that are going on. So, um, it, it's in the the link is right in the the minutes or the agenda if you haven't seen it but Allison is I, I hate to ask this question but is that relatively new or has that been there a while it is relatively new um, mainly it started during the art master plan engagement the airport um, engagement project and um, 1500 Colton, the community gathering space project. So it is relatively new. Um, although a lot of the different findings for those projects, you know, can be found there. So um, a lot of that information that was gathered during those projects lives in that website. Okay. And so that's the intent. It's for things where you need public, you're asking for feedback from the residents on very specific issues. Okay, shape superior. So it's your chance to shape superior, I assume. I mean, that seems obvious and, now that we say it, but. <coughs> right, me. and just a quick note, um, you know, the uh, post master plan survey will be posted at shape superior probably around the week of August 17th, so next week. Okay. Awesome. I really love the picture of Superior here too on this website. It's really cool. Um, anyway, sorry, I digress. Um, okay, standing updates. Uh, Ormond Roach, uh, anything on Ormond Roach? We've talked a little bit about it, but also including the CAP subcommittee. So we heard no. a little bit from Tracy and Rayner, but go ahead and provide what other else you'd like to. Yeah, maybe a few pieces of information and um, so the RFQ went out of a month or so or two ago and um, they got back 153 responses <laughs> for oh, uh, wow. which is substantial. <laughs> and uh, so now the committee members who meet tomorrow have to go through all the responses and make a yes, no, or maybe recommendation. So I'm half through it. I don't know where you are, Tracy. <laughs> It is. Are it you is. are you telling me I should have allotted more time than after this meeting <laughs> because I didn't? <laughs> it is time consuming, <laughs> and I want to do the rest tonight and tomorrow morning. But anyway, it, a, a good sign is there's lots of responses, and of course, depending on the personal viewpoint and priority, half of them you can say no immediately. But it will be interesting to see what the, the consensus of the group will be tomorrow. And I think um, if they, the group can nail it down to kind of a handful or so um, um, artists, then they want to do the next step and maybe kind of um, see some more of the details. Reiner, a request, if you, if you don't see me at the meeting, will you make a mental note of the events and um, we can talk afterwards about it? I'm not sure if I'll be able to get there because of work. Sure, I can, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay, well, thank you for that update. Um, the next update is on Rocky Flats and the Rocky Mountain Greenway. So Joel sent out some information. Um, I haven't, I didn't have a chance to go through it all, but it is showing, I pulled it up real briefly. And so uh, it's the kind of the second one is the latest and greatest map of where the trails will go. Like the alignment seemed to change every time we see a map but this one looks like it's um, 
may be getting more finalized. Um, it also shows where there would be the overpass from the Westminster Trail System and Dog Park over Indiana into the, uh, into the Rocky Flats area. So it's not that far down Indiana and then it would come over and then it would curve south to go around the hot zone and then all the trails would, would linger around behind there. Um, and then he sent the environmental assessment that was published. And I actually read that a few weeks ago, but I actually don't remember the, the summary of it. Does anyone recall? I think it said, does anyone, I don't know if anyone remembers. I, I remember thinking there was something interested in here, interesting that They said essentially that there, you know, yes, there was one hot spot, but that was it. And that they essentially feel um, that it would be safe to build over in there. But I need to, let's You're not right take on that, that as, okay. That's the ac accurate brief okay. summary. Which, I mean, it's, it's one study, right? So knowing the history, I... I might choose personally to feel a little different, but um, that is the study. So, you know, it looks like it's going to happen, but it's not. I mean, it, again, it's still proposed, so I don't think that it's definite, but I don't know if there's anything else to talk about on this, really, unless anybody else has anything they want to offer. Okay. Um, the Raptor program. Frank, do you have an yeah. update? Yeah, uh, four things. Um, number one, um, the equipment, uh, much appreciated. Thank you, everybody. Um, number two, um, and this is perhaps a question for Allison, but the question is about screech owls in Grasso Park. Um, last year, Peter was allowed to play calls once or twice per week after dark. Uh, and the idea here is to draw the owls into the boxes that you all installed last year. Right. So Peter just wanted to know if that was cool for him to do again this year round. Yeah, if, yeah, absolutely. And if he just lets me know, so if any questions come through, I can just kind of make my team aware of it. Um, like let you know when he's going out there? Yeah, like what is his okay. span? When is he kind of going to be in the, around that area? And, you know, we had no comments from many residents about that last year. So I'm thinking it must be, you know, non-invasive. <laughs> yeah. Invasive. Cool. Good. Um, yeah, he's excited about that. And I think the timing is right to get going on it. So, so thank you for that. Um, he's wor working on the end of year report and he anticipates it having a similar uh, frame to what was developed for last year. Uh, and then the, the last question, this is somewhat of a question. Um, he and I got talking about cottonwood trees and, um, and I was just sort of my own curiosity. Does the town have a, a, a management strategy for these things? Like something in writing? I'm just curious if they have a management strategy for things like cottonwoods or old trees or whatnot. It was more of a curiosity for me. Well, um, you know, basically how it has been is if there's been a tree removed, there's a tree replacing it. Of course, with the ash borer, depending on, you know, how many are having to be taken down, you know, we're going to try to replace as many as we can. Um, we haven't really got to a point where we're not able to replace as many as we're taking down that I know of. Yeah. Um, and as far as cottonwoods, they have a longevity of like, uh, I, I want to say 100 to 150 yeah. years. And then they kind of, you know, limbs start falling and the tree dies. And so, and then it takes so long to grow another one of that size. So, um, you know, there, it, there, there are different budgets for tree replacement and tree mm -hmm. additions. And, um, you know, we, we're planning every year um, and we're also removing every year, uh, especially with- Well, board. part of my motivation, Alan, for, for asking that question was it, it actually, so the, the cottonwoods in particular, as you say, they live a long time. They die very slowly. They lose limbs, but they also serve as habitat. 
for a really long right. time, even when they're dead. And it seems like the town does a really good job of leaving up those dead ones so long as they're not unsafe. Uh, right. And I think and that that's a really important always. criteria. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, Peter mentioned the couple that were next to the dog park that unfortunately had to be removed because had they fallen, some bad things might have happened. Um, so I was just sort of curious if there was sort of something written down on that or if it was more just kind of ad hoc, depending on the particular scenario, of the particular well, tree location. you know, and there's a lot of work done on it because all of the trees are mapped, you know, mm. all of their conditions of each and every tree in town is mapped. Um, and then, you know, when there is a new, uh, like Wildflower Park, for example, you know, when that park was built, you know, we had trees installed when it was developed, and then we'll rotate Arbor Day around. And wherever, you know, wherever we feel the need for more shade or more trees, Arbor Day is held in that area, and then more trees are planted and more irrigation is installed. So, um, yeah, I mean, I guess it's not a specific written code, although there may be something, um, but it's definitely you know, one of the top priorities, I think. And it's also in the parks re- or the pro stack uh, amenities prioritization. Um, you know, that's part of their process of identifying amenities that are needed throughout town and in the parks. And shade is always one of those amenities right. that are prioritized. Thanks for that summary. Um, Ryan, that ends the Raptor report and questions. Okay. Hey, Frank, just um, a side note. Remember, we did make that recommendation about Cottonwoods. Yes. Does anyone know when that was? When did we do that? It was actually my first meeting. Um, and it was actually that, that whatever we call it, that had me concerned. Because one of the things we wrote in there was replace dead trees. And I got to thinking, well, maybe that's not the best idea. And so I wanted to check with the town to see if they were smarter than us or me. Uh, and it turns out they are. Uh, so I'm good. <laughs> Is that why you raised that? No, I think it's great that you asked about a specific plan because I personally would prefer something more about those cottonwoods, but at least we have one thing that's written down, which was our recommendation. Yeah. <clears throat> the, um, the only other thing I'll mention is, you know, right about an hour and a half before this meeting started, we got an email from uh, Shayla Medina from Girl Scout Troop 879 on a field guide for birds in Superior. Um, It's really kind of cool. It's like 35 pages of pictures of birds um, found around town. So um, I'll make sure to to thank her for this. I mean, is this, would this be a candidate for putting something up on the OSAC website and linking to it? I mean, it wasn't done by, you know, town staff or, or a professional, but is that something I mean, residents may find it interesting to have this guide if, if they're so interested. Strikes me as a fantastic newsletter item. That's what I was just thinking. Like maybe oh, we could say, still. hey, look at look at what one of our um, residents has you know accomplished in town. I would also maybe have uh, Peter or one of our bird uh, experts that we've been working with to just kind of give it a once over before we send it out. Yeah, I think that's a great. Well, I was idea. I was going to share it with uh, Peter um, regardless, um, and I'm happy to do that, Ryan, if you'd like. Yeah, he has a few I, I people mean, on his team that can help too. I I think it's a fantastic idea. I just I think it's great that's that she thought to reach out to us to share this yeah. with us, and yeah, I just think it's cool. So yeah, why don't we do that, and then we could put it in a a newsletter item would be. Great with her. All we'll need to ask. I mean, obviously, we'll have to ask her permission. <clears throat> but getting her in touch that. with our Raptor program, if it is something she's passionate about, to yeah. add another volunteer, mm-hmm. um, I'm sure Peter will be delighted. Yeah. Okay. Well, mm-hmm. I will. I will respond to her um, either later tonight or tomorrow. So, okay. Um, oil and gas. Um, Marcy, I know there isn't much update, but no, can... there isn't. Um, I did a I did an update last time that was quite detailed. Um, they 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 have the according to the law they now have appointed a new commission 
and the new commission is not going to start hearings until August 24th. So right now, not a whole lot is happening. And my update from last month is um, still stands, basically. But if I could take this time and just go over two points. I, not, I noted um, my homework on prairie dogs. And I just want to make sure that I've got what I need to do. One that was raised was concerned about the role of Boulder County over um, superior prairie dogs. And the other issue is what studies Boulder has done on prairie dogs that we can use in Boulder. Did I miss anything? Was there any other, other thing that I missed that I'm I'm sorry, Marcy, I was taking a note. What was the first one? Uh, concern about the role of Boulder County on uh, for Superior Prairie. Uh, I, the, the only other one I had, and, and I'm not sure if you should take it on or not, I'll leave that to you, was, was Broomfield. They seem to have a relocation program already oh, okay. in progress. And, and, and one of the location spots is Rocky Flats, which is right across the street you know, from CenturyLink. And so it just sort of struck me their lessons learned there might apply pretty easily over in CenturyLink without costing us much money, if any. And I had, oh, I had brought up what resources are available to us for the town of Superior from Boulder County. And that may be obvious because you're going to ask someone who is a resource that you have found. But if we have additional questions, is there someone that we could reach out to and would be available to us? Oh, okay. Sort of like a contact person, point person. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, guys. All right. Thank you, Mercy. Okay, the last issue or the last standing update was on the soft, soft, soft shoulder trail project. Wow, that's a tongue twister. Um, you know, Joel was, I think, was Joel the only one that was working on that, com that project with this committee? Um, and so he's not here. So, um, you know, unless somebody's been going to pro stack meetings and following along, which I don't even know if they're talking about it in the meetings. Um, so if anybody has an update, great. If not, we'll, we'll shelve it until next meeting. Okay. Well, we are done. Meeting is adjourned and it is 740. So thank you all very much for your time. Appreciate a great meeting. Take care, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. See ya. Bye, y'all. Thank you.